Welcome back. I'm Derek here at the Keystone Central Railroad and uh, this video will be on wiring up the program track. So stay tuned for some excitement. Okay, the uh, first step in uh, having a program track of course is laying it, uh, which I've already done. This is a stub end program track. It does not tie back into the layout at the other end. And uh, the purpose of wiring this up the way I'm going to is so I can use it uh, as part of the main layout when I'm not programming. And when I am programming I can uh, isolate it from the main layout and uh, nothing bad can happen as far as anything else on the on the main part of the layout as uh, you know making mistakes of reprogramming everything that's on the layout so now moving on you want to have an isolated section in your programming track which right here mine is isolated right here at the beginning of it and again right here it's isolated so this is essentially an isolated section section of track that we can disable and make a dead section uh, with the toggle switch so that way there is no uh, accident as far as programming track power reaching the uh, main layout uh, whenever we have the toggle switched to programming now the, the, the length of this section depends on uh, the length of your longest locomotive uh, take your longest locomotive and you want your track to be one and a half times that length roughly that way there's no uh, risk of your locomotive being able to bridge this completely and uh, tie back in into the uh, layout and uh, actually uh, transfer programming power across the dead section so um, I made that one roughly uh, I think uh, 20 inches to 24 inches I think my longest locomotive right now is 17 inches so that's what I made that so just roughly uh, one and a half or so the length of your locomotive alright let's move on alright uh, now I have the uh, PCP panel uh, from the power cab mounted right here as you know I'm using the power cab uh, with an SB5 smart booster. The smart booster does not have a uh, dedicated programming output so uh, you, can on, you can only program on the main with your power cab and uh, which is doesn't work for some decoders and besides uh, I personally want to have a separate dedicated programming track and uh, this is the perfect way to do it. The other panels I have located around the layout that you've seen me using during operations those are just UT UTP panels that are connected to the booster so there is no uh, no way to uh, use that for my uh, programming track so I will use the uh, PCP panel that originally came with the power cab I wasn't using it anyways so that I have mounted here and then uh, we will also have the uh, USB interface from uh, NCE that will be mounted back here. I will show that later. That way we can uh, connect that to our computer. Uh, but right now I do have that mounted so I wanted to show you that and, and give you the reason why. Uh, so whenever I want to do any programming on the program track I will unplug it from the main layout, my throttle, unplug the power cab throttle from the main layout and move it to this section or this panel. Alright, moving on. Alright, and now you see a close-up of the back of the toggle switch that I'm using. It's a four-pole double-throw toggle switch which I will be using to be able to isolate the dead section and power it back on whenever I want to use it for the uh, the main part of the layout. Um, it's a it's a simple uh, the toggle switch. I'll show you the other side when I get done here, but um, it looks intimidating but it, it's not once you uh, understand it a little bit we do have 12 spots uh, on, on the back of the toggle switch for wires I know it's kinda hard to see a little ugly too 
I'm no uh, electronics expert by any means. Uh, but we have three rows of four uh, points for wires. Now to understand this I will post a link in the description to Model Railroad Hobbyist that has a nice article on this along with the I diagram that's a little bit easier to follow than what I'm doing here. Um, so let's se separate this quick. Um, trying to uh, figure out a way to explain this. Um, this top row of four that is an input. Everything that goes through there is coming into the switch. Same with the bottom four across the bottom. That's uh, anything power going into the switch. And the center four will be your output. Anything leaving the switch and going back to the uh, track. Now, when the switch is thrown one direction, it will be connecting the middle ones to the top ones from directly across each other. Like this one and this one will be connected, this one and this one will be connected, this one and this one will be connected, and so on. When you flip it the other way, it will connect the bottom ones with the middle. So when it's thrown one way, you, you got the input coming in from this side and leaving the middle. When it's thrown the other way, you'll have the input coming in from the bottom, the bottom four, and leaving the center, depending on uh, which, uh, which method you're doing. So this across the top, this is just uh, track power coming from the bus line. It's the same, it's just I separated it in, into two. So I have my red which is one rail and my white which is another rail. These will both get tied into the same to in, back into the bus line, you know. So this is just normal track power coming in. Um, the bottom right here there's nothing that's because that's going to be our dead track now these two these two middle ones right here will leave and go to the uh, the uh, isolated section of track now over here we have track power coming in from the bus line and the bottom we have power coming from the uh, UTP panel that will be our programming input and then leaving there the center the center two on this side this is going to the uh, programming track portion one on each you know one wire goes one rail one goes the other rail so when I have it switched the one direction it's just normal track power coming in and normal track power coming out to both the program track and the isolated track when I throw it the other way the isolated track is now dead because we don't have any input coming in. So there will be no track power going to that. And the uh, program side will switch from normal track power to uh, the uh, programming power coming from the, the power cab, PCP panel, and computer. Because that's the input coming in and the output coming out will go to the, uh, the program track. I hope that makes some sense. Um, but anyways, uh, check out the description, go to that link. It'll probably make a little bit more sense whenever, uh, whenever you read it and see a nice diagram. This is kind of just a jumbled mess of wires right now. But it just to give you an idea, we got our three rows here. So whenever this is thrown this way, if you look at it, it's going to look at the angle. It goes up and it'll connect these, these two rows. When it's thrown in the middle, everything's off. When it's thrown to the other way, follow the angle, it will connect the middle and the bottom row instead of the middle and the top like the other way. Hope that makes sense. Alright, moving along.